most of the things are exactly the same. In other words, okay, the companies are slightly different and some of the politicians are different, but overall it's not. We're addressing the how to convince uh, the public authorities that they should be taking full account of what uh, the basically the rest of society, including companies, and, but it's NGOs and so on as well. What I'm proud of is that in these last, it's an exponential learning curve that uh, Romania as a country has gone in. The politicians have still got a bit behind to catch up, but uh, from the, there's a lot of young guys doing businesses, design business and so on. Younger, brighter people are not joining, not going to politics. So I think it's a big problem. I'm not sure if it's when you were saying you use the the HR human resources campaign, if you like, of the politicians. I don't think it's down to them. I'm afraid it's down to us, the people. We need to be say, actually, yeah, I'm going to join a political party. And what is needed, in my view, is younger people. We want people from their 25 to 35, 35 to 40 age with their ideas and saying, okay, let's let me join and let's think this is what our education policy should be. This is what our you know finance and economics and so on. But there's many other things involved in government, and I think they just need to gradually. We hope to this more and more will be convinced if they get so pissed off that they said, look, I really not represent it. Good morning. Uh, I'm here uh, with uh, a special guest for the Public Affairs Domain in Romania. I'm here with Mr. Uh, we are here with Mr. Guy Barrow, uh, the one who initiated the first consultancy, the first public affairs consultancy in Romania in late 90s, I think 1997. Mm-hmm. Central European Consulting, uh, the first public affairs professional team, yeah. a school maybe, a lobbying and government relations school, I could say, because many of the member, many members of your team back there, mm-hmm. uh, guy, they they are special people in the in the industry. They are leaders in the industry, having either mm-hmm. their own agencies or being directors for corporate affairs in in, uh, big companies. So Mm -hmm. what I think we are interested to find out, because I think this domain, public affairs, is the path, one of the key uh, ways to develop Romania. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know if your vision, when you started it, was the same. Yeah, Uh, it was exactly the same. And I want to as one thing I've noticed now, still uh, partly active in this area, I've noticed that most of the things are exactly the same. In other words, okay, the companies are slightly different and some of the politicians are different, but overall it's not. We're addressing the how to convince uh, the public authorities that they should be taking full account of what uh, the basically the rest of society, including companies, and, but it's NGOs and so on as well. Uh, you s- mentioned that uh, it was like a school. It was a, a rather school which was a bit repetitive, unfortunately. Unfortunately, in fact, the idea is that uh, we were training people so well that uh, within one or two years, these people who were saying, oh, we're the account manager of X large company, uh, were suddenly saying, bye-bye, you know, I'm on my way, path to develop a career. So it's a great compliment, but it's also one of the things that any small business and consulting company has, which is to keep developing staff, and good staff are always hunted and looked for with higher salaries and you know, other conditions. But, of course, I'm very happy because, of course, it meant that then potentially we had people in country in companies who we wanted to work for and eventually did. It's the same thing, actually, if I may, uh, <clears throat> happening uh, right now when I'm developing the Public Affairs Solutions team. Mm. Uh, we, as you well know, uh, we were uh, the Maguire Woods Romania, the Romanian mm. branch of uh, the American company Maguire Woods up to December 2019. And after mm. that, we continued uh, on our own, par- in partnership with Maguire Woods, but on our own as Public Affairs Solutions, is, which was actually the definition of of uh, how the Maguire Woods Consulting uh, was describing themselves. But Public Affairs Solutions right now is already a brand on Romanian mm. uh, 
on the Romanian market, on the Romanian industry. Uh, people in corporate affairs, they know about us, about our services, and we are already, uh, I think, 16 years old this year. Uh, so 16 years passed really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are progresses. What are the progresses you see in the industry, Guy? Uh, well, one or two of um, one or two of the change. I've said some things are still the same. So yeah. the challenges are still the same. How to convince people that they should be listening to the business sector. But one thing which has improved since then, which is an important thing, is the business professional apropos to professionalizing. I think everything should be more and more professionalized, and in a good sense of. Uh, uh, saying people should arrange meetings with politicians or with others, not because they're good friends, but because they want to meet them on a, for a professional reason, and e ethically, and this side of it being uh, the ethics to should be part of any public affairs campaign or company even should be in your, you know, should be an ethics part of the association. But one development has been the growth of the industry associations. So when we started in the 90s, we had to, we realized part of the professionalizing and people learning what does it mean efficient public affairs included meaning companies and, but also NGOs and so on working together and forming associations. So the beer association, the the cable association we did, there's uh, two or three in the pharmaceutical and so on. These are very important that we started then and now they've evolved. So they've become very professional. And what does that mean? It means that you don't just put a guy who's head of the big company and said, OK, hey, making Domino the executive director and doing things there. But no, you said, no, our association, we're representing the industry, including all the employees of Romanian employees and it's run on a professional it's a paid person who is the director executive for example and they have a small team team run things and then but the members of the industry are then on the board of that so for example a soft drink association uh, it's run by uh, it's mr ionescu and his team but the members of the board, which are guiding that as to what to do, are Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and uh, European drinks, and so on. So it's that example which is now in uh, spread in other industries, which is important step, I think. Indeed, it, this is one thing. And another thing is that maybe, uh, even though not sufficiently, maybe some of the politicians understood the domain. Because in Brussels, it is very clear that the interest group need to be, groups need to be represented. And the lobbyists and the consult, public affairs consultants are doing this in a professional manner, respecting ethics, uh, ethical values, respecting yeah. legitimacy, respecting the approach, the fair approach, the correct approach on, on, uh, on every issue. Um, doing the things in the right way as my former boss, Governor Jim Hodges, used to say, doing the things the right way. So uh, that's I think... Very, that's very important. Sorry to interrupt that. Yes, because uh, please. Th that's exactly the, the point of saying, because we're trying to th think today, what are what is the point of public affairs? Why should people even pay people to help them do this? And that's one of the main messages, is to get across to, to in a professional way to authorities they're saying, ah, we always, they always, companies just talk to change the law for their company and so on. But in fact, for 90% of businesses, if not more, they're developing a long term business. It's not a five year company. It, they're developing a long term business and they want the laws not to be changing. And if you want exactly. it not to be changing, you have to say, right, Mr. Politician, uh, we see the law needs to change on this. Let's partly be involved in this, but what we're finding, what we're looking for, is a solution that works, not just for us, uh, you know, one company and so on. So I think that aspect is, is should be underlined more and more that 
we're always coming with uh, suggestions of how the law should work and it's not just a, a favoritism thing for the business it is uh, exactly like this i mean uh, the law should be predictable the framework should be predictable <clears throat> for big investors exactly as you said because otherwise they don't come for anymore. all investors for all let's investors. get you right here because i also think at uh, from the 90s there was more uh, more of a thing oh the new investors a new foreign oh my god foreign investors uh, coming um but and i was always advocating within our company and within these associations i mentioned to said look we've got to have romanian members of the Uh, associations because even if they're young and growing and people would complain and say, well there's not enough uh, young Romanian companies you know they haven't learned about capitalism I mean that's bullshit they were a lot of people learning a lot of people were learning and making mistakes like anywhere you know, little companies went bust it's not easy running a business employing even if it's only two or three people but that's the thing to encourage uh, all investors so that was my point that even if it's And, and it is now, of course, a great number of uh, local investors here. So for it should be a fair law for a business, period, camp foreign and uh, Romania. But uh, if I'm not if uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think you are a Romanian citizen. Yeah, <laughs> so, I am now. Yeah. So. Uh, for a long time. Just for for my generation, for the younger mm. ones to remember, why should we be proud of being Romanian? Why are you proud of being Romanian? <sighs> well, because uh, I can, as a person, I can make a, make a, a good life. I feel comfortable and happy in the environment with all the stupid things that go on day to day but they go on in you know every country and there are always a lot of you just need to look around it sometimes Ray, you know, i was going to say look in the papers look online uh, on the internet news and there's actually if you look just jump away from entertainment and uh, sport and something and to <coughs> business and finance you'd be surprised that it isn't that boring and there's a lot of news about young entrepreneurs and so on and so what i'm proud of is that in these last it's an exponential learning curve that uh, romania as a country has gone in the politicians have still got a bit behind to catch up but uh, from the, there's a lot of young guys doing businesses design business and so on and i To give you a, a, an example uh, one of the projects i want to get going here is an is a, the a cultural center around the english language uh, based around an english language theater which will be mm -hmm. every some foreign actors coming but also for romanian actors speaking romanian but the, that project which we built up a, a new team i propose you like you are just building your team and That's what made me feel proud again because I was looking around for a young marketing person, a young a designer who lives down the road here, uh, a Romania a designer here. And uh, all the, the whole team of there were in their you know, 30s and so on. And I said, right, this is exactly shows you what's available. If people come with ideas, you can always find the people. And the hardest job in any business, as it always has been, is getting good people. And I would say there is plenty of choice. So I'm very happy. So, and apart from that, I have a wife and we have family and children and people around. So we have a happy life as well. So that's why I'm proud and tell people, go abroad, you know, because open your eyes. You've always got something to learn. And uh, be don't just be ashamed to say you know something Roman. After my my governmental tenure, uh, I was thinking about uh, because the Brexit did not happen yet back then. So I was thinking about uh, moving to London because it's uh -huh. a business center, mm. and or to Brussels. But uh, after visiting both, I decided to remain in, in Bucharest. 
So I think it's a good choice. I think it's a very good choice. But it show, it be, part of the decision was you re, because you had looked outside and you said, oh, maybe I'll get a, you know, better conditions or something, something better. Exactly. You realize, actually, they're not that much better. There's all, there are issues to deal with there as well and so on. And you have to decide, do I want to deal with those or rather be at home and develop something new and exciting here? Exactly. And Which is uh, what you obviously did. Exactly. And I'm very proud of because I think that uh, when I look at... And you have the trust, sorry, you were saying yes. about what, what, why am I proud to be. Because people, that uh, serious people that come to our country now, I can say ours, like the American and British partners that you've spoken about, they trust you. I mean, they, they have... Uh, when you feel that people trust you, that's an amazing thing to feel and obviously you do and you set up a company with them and so on. Thank you so much. We discussed about uh, with some uh, a former uh, former CEO or former minister uh, who is actually regional CEO for an important uh, com group of companies. Mm. Uh, I asked him about uh, what how can we define our job, our profession, let's say. And he said you are for the investors, uh, the people who are professionally translating the universal literature for somebody who only knows one language. And also for the yeah. politician, you are the guarantee of significant things that will happen. Is it fair enough? I think enough? that's a very, a very good one because I'm glad you mentioned the politician's part. Let's always, in all our business, remember we're here for two things. It isn't only to help the business develop in the country. It's to help our leaders lead in our little way, contribute to them doing things. I'll use a Romanian phrase, I won't pick my dash step. Yes. Uh, and that's what we can help with. And a politician should be, and equally I was saying it's good when people have confidence in you from outside or in us as a company. Politicians, they, I mean, they need a comfort as well. I mean, we should, uh, I said, okay, they have some catching up to do. But remember, most people that are in politics are honest people. They're trying to do a job. Whether they're good or bad is okay. You can debate. But overall, they do, I mean, they are trying to do a, a job. But they, they have a limited experience. So it's normal that on many aspects where they have to make laws, we should be the ones providing a bit of background to their help them and their experts. They have experts. And in Parliament, there are expert committees, which in my experience work very well, in fact. There's a few who have headlined with scandal type things, but mostly they're not. And that's where you can quietly help things. And that's professionalism as well. Being ethically saying, but okay, this is our position. And... Uh, I'm touching the, this bit of paper because one of the other important things about uh, professionalism and good ethics is uh, when you should always be thinking, well, why did we meet so-and-so or why did we meet that minister or an advisor or why should the company do? To give our position, and there's no secret, I mean, generally, everything when you're trying to make a proposed change, we write it down. So this is what the proposal is. We think the benefits are that. We've calculated that the cost is this and the risk is so-and-so. Here, Mr. Minister, please read it and uh, use it. And the important thing to have, uh, like I'd call a position paper on most issues so that also afterwards when the media want to say, ah, those companies, they just want uh, to support for themselves or something, it's very important to have for the public to say, no, we had a meeting, and that's what we explained to them. It was nothing, we had a personal meeting, but the basis was this. And there's no secrets on this, Sid, and if there are, you should question. Even we should question. I mean, that's part of exactly. the point also of public affairs is advising to, of good proposals, but also challenging to the authorities when they're saying, well, wait a minute, that really doesn't make sense and this is why and so on so uh, on that idea of presenting positions and ideas um, 
the I mentioned associations. In fact, the the other thing to mention is the apart from the associations within industry, there is also, of course, chambers of commerce yes, which are, have become very well. They were active. I saw the last year. I mean, just uh, last week that uh, the British Chamber had 25 years uh, anniversary. anniversary. And I'm very proud to say that I was the chairman of that in one, mm-hmm. the first, uh, one of its first iterations. And the AmCham for 30 years, and those now two work together. So they are very uh, important, again, to have a lobbying group towards the, the government. And and uh, I was reading just the other day that you know about the difference about uh, lobbying and advocacy. That lobbying is mainly about a private interest, maybe advocacy is about a public interest. But I would say the public affairs industry is about the intersection. What it's what is common between the private interest and the public interest, because. Every time you, yeah, as a consultant, so. you choose a, a public affairs campaign or you propose a public affairs campaign, you are putting also the public interest and the private interest together, the, the interest of the association of an industry together with the interest of a, the interests of the public. It doesn't work if you don't. Exactly. No, I can completely agree. And it's uh, I would say it's an arbitrary difference, really, between, oh, well, which bit is advocacy? Where's the line? Where's the line? It yes. doesn't matter. There isn't a line. I mean, they, they're in the same overall sector. And there's no shame about lobbying. The, what there is shame in is in breaking the law, which means bribing. Exactly. People try and use other words. Oh, well, you know, they went there. You, you know how that... I said, no, what do you mean? So... Lobbying, trying to persuade people of your view, lobby in limba romane, we we took the word the same word, is the idea of persuading the authorities, which are completely legitimate. They don't have to agree. In the end, they decide. But it's the same things, and it should happen. NGOs, when they're trying to set, whether it's on environmental ones, issues or or uh, or other ones. They also were trying to persuade the authorities said, no, don't agree with this because. But they have a duty, in my view, to also have official positions. Okay, why are you saying this? What's the reason? And so on. So the public can decide what uh, what goes on. And, uh, and so it, it, there's no bad word and people should be worrying about the word of lobby. And remember, I remember now when NATO, when Romania finally was accepted into NATO in the early 2000s. And uh, I couldn't believe finally that the, the main press was accepting the word lobby in a legitimate way, which is a normal way, in other words. And what was it? He said, uh, King Regele Re Mihai uh, lobby Pento Romania and Bras Bruxelles about uh, NATO. I thought, excellent, good example. The king is a he's a great lobbyist. He did exactly. a good job. So, in other words, but it demonstrates the idea is that lobby just means you as an entity or a person are trying to persuade people. In the and most legitimate manner possible. And that you can. Exactly. And you will try. But you must, and people, we should do that. We should remember, part, uh, I also believe an important part of... Uh, society developing and I think in this way uh, Romanian all the generations now need to be a bit more involved in uh, in committed to uh, in public is sort of feeling a society duty to say actually I should contribute something why don't I volunteer why don't I get involved with an NGO and you know not just leave it to other people exactly um, one of the issues that companies need to think about because uh, when you're a company and you want the best people in the employment pool, you want the best educated, so education is very important. But one element of education is this one, this sort of civic duty. I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, and the fact that at one election recently, almost 12 million 12 million did not vote. That was a lot of 
I mean, some older people, but a lot of younger ones, which meant they didn't feel able to vote. And I understand that. But it's partly up to politicians and entities and so on to say, look, let's get people more involved. Why do they not even want to go and vote and get involved in activities? It's not directly public affairs, but it is. It's part of society as a background. I think public affairs gives you the chance to be also an activist. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. We are doing currently, we are uh, activating, we are members also of the, of the FM Cham, of uh, British Romanian <coughs> Chamber of Commerce, of the French Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. the German Chamber of Commerce, because we are very, uh, we pay attention to what's happening with the relationship between uh, the Romani Romanian economy and the Western economies. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the values that are promoted in more developed uh, or traditional democracies. Uh, and I think almost every member of my team is also an activist. Either we fight against racism, either we fight against poverty and we promote mm -hmm. social inclusion. Even uh, sometimes we are uh, focused on uh, women's rights, on, on uh, mm -hmm. equality of chances. Sometimes we are focused on the rights of the disabled. Recently, I think uh, there are more than um, these days, I think there are eight years since me personally, when I was part of the government as State Secretary for Labor, uh, I saluted the President Obama and the Supreme Court decision from United States regarding gay marriages. Mm -hmm. So I was the first public official to do this in Romania. I think we have eight years ago. So I think many steps will continue because there are some issues uh, because of the polarization. Romania looks, we have Bucharest, which is almost ha with the GDP per capita at PPP at the uh, level of uh, Austria. We have uh, Transylvania, which is the level of Hungary, but we have lots of regions uh, and places in Moldavia and Oltenia that are still uh, too conservative or far from what's yeah. happening in Europe, in, in the world. And this is why sometimes conservative attitudes, uh, not exactly in a good way, uh, are are uh, mo are still present here, and I think yeah. part of developing democracy is understanding better. So, understanding what's happening, why we should be active, why we should promote and, this, and that you can participate. That's it. Part the, the, what you to build on what you said is that be, you can do build. You can be part of building democracy. Sometimes you, we sit at home or we go to the coffee and outside, especially in the nice weather and so on, and think, yeah, okay, it, life isn't so bad. But it, that you got to put something in as well. Join a political party, you know. God almighty, everyone, the young, younger ones especially, but not only saying, ah, you know. And why not? You can be the one of the ones to pushing them to change. Are the public affairs consultants, uh, the lobbies are um, champions of change? In of positive change? Yeah, I, I would, uh, I think they are. That's a very good, uh, one of the descriptions of what they do or what they can do. What they can do, because remember, like, power is something you need to be very careful of and use it in the right ways. Exactly. To using it in the right way, they can be great agent, agents of oh. change. Yeah. Do we still, I mean... We still have uh, politicians who are reluctant to meetings with lobbies, with associations. Mm -hmm. They say, I don't have time, I don't have enough time to work in the yeah. government to do mm -hmm. the paperwork and everything. Some, some say, leave me alone, I know what to do, I know, mm -hmm. I know what to do before you can present me an opinion. And what I feel sometimes they don't understand this is a duty because you are there for public service and it's your duty to listen to interest group, interest yeah. group and to associations and to lobbies because they help you develop better public policy in the end. This is something that we are doing. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what the short answer of that is. I mean, because it means educating politicians. It's like we're almost saying before anyone enters parliament, they should their first thing should be like a tutorial, maybe tutorial with a public affairs company, saying, look, Domla, let's explain, or Domla. 
uh, why it's important to get different opinions. Maybe that's an idea that we should try and this, this education of uh, politicians about what mean what public duty means. Of course, they all said, "Oh, I understand what it is," and so on. But uh, I think that maybe talk about it more as well, and let's get that. If people discuss it online and so on, maybe they can start to listen. But that, that's a long, that's a longer job. But you, you, you don't ignore it just because it's long term. And in the near future, let's say, if somebody who is uh, studying, I don't know, uh, political science, sociology, whatever, economy wants to join this industry mm. mm-hmm. how how the young that young person the young lady or man should plan uh, their career path what they should learn in order to become a good public affairs consultant yeah that's uh, i think there's no fixed a uh, list that you could said okay a lobbyist should own, should always ha- uh, or public affairs person should be this list that's the danger of a government then saying oh only if you have all those can we you know <laughs> we do we allow you to be official lobbyist which is a complete non- nonsense i think uh, it's important to try and get some experience in a small in a small business because laws I mean, a lot of people work for companies. A lot of Romanian citizens they work for small businesses, little shop, everything from shops and so on to delivery company to whatever. So, one element is try to get some experience as an as a start. I don't want to say intern necessarily without a salary, but a low, a starting position, mm-hmm. just to get an idea of what it is to work in. A, a bit of discipline and procedures and so on of how to run things. I think that's a very good thing to help you. I think uh, they should uh, do what I mentioned earlier about joining up. They should be the sort of ones who join a political party and said, let me let me get involved at the ground floor just as a you know a simple member in your local branch. I think that would be a very important step as well. And uh, make sure make sure you've got a varied education, if you like, meaning uh, something else as well. Think of what I, you want to do on the cultural side. Do you want to get hold of a musical instrument? Say, hey, wait a minute, let me do that. Or a sport or something is always a good thing. Just to have not so dedicated on that one thing that you become obsessed because it's quite easy to be on such an interesting area. So that would be my ideas. Thank you so much. I think the this discussion really gave me vision for uh, for the next 10, 20 years because I think mm. years are passing pretty fast, but I think that's what we need to look exactly. Yes. Changes, uh, good changes, positive changes uh, are close. Um and um many good things could happen for the companies by developing good public affairs campaigns because we are navigating the multinational companies mm-hmm. who, which have the color <clears throat> the the culture of, of of corporate affairs and public affairs already we're navigating them through the public sector to the decision decision making makers uh, framework so we have ethics codes we have the association that uh, Laura Flora initiated we are part of, of the association the association for uh, the Romanian registry for uh, lobbying yeah. um, we have many campaigns that have provided good results with thousands of people are of Romanians mm-hmm. are hired because public affairs consultancies have done their job some of uh, some of us are really taking care of a client by bringing them to a country and developing the, the, the activities they do here. By being part of them, actually making their investment here and yeah. starting. We convince people to invest yeah. here. 
And sometimes when people are, not, are super, superficially analyzing the public affairs activities, <clears throat> they don't see the impact mm-hmm. that we are doing because somehow maybe we develop uh, a humbleness culture, which is not bad, but maybe we should be heard more. So still be very decent and correct, but maybe maybe raise our voice slightly and through un timbre a bit more. Yeah, but but still the approach should be the same based on, uh, you know, very well prepared documentation and a very prepared case and so on. Yeah. I was, uh, th- uh, this morning I was discussing with uh, some colleagues and I have asked people on LinkedIn about the dress code. Of course, this dress code that I have, which is casual, yeah. uh, is not my dress code from, from the office. And yeah. your dress code is very nice. It's a, it's a business casual one or a business an office one, which mm. is uh, very elegant. And I wanted to have this contrast for, the, for our viewers. But I strongly think that in our business, we should be office dressed. We should be business dressed in order to... Uh, to show our respect to the political environment and also to our clients, no matter yeah. what, what's happening. Even I think the CEO of um, one big IT company commented to my post saying that maybe you can be a little like business casual or smart casual in the office, but always have, always dress like a top lawyer when going to the client and we're going to the authorities, which I strongly like because otherwise I see, I saw some of the colleagues, some of the lobbyists trying to get into this wave of being uh, hipster style or, you know, let's say like uh, more um, relaxed or um, how could I possibly put it? Uh, I, uh, it is not something I think it's working. Not here, neither here, nor in UK, nor in the United States. What do you think? Well, I think everything, everything has has its place, and it doesn't and they are, one doesn't exclude the other. Yeah. So I completely agree, and in all my life, I've been I've uh, liked uh, clothes and style and so on, and music and so on, different sort of music from jazz to classical and stuff and some hipster stuff as well but i had it it was like every whatever part of the day we're talking about so during the day and so on so normally i would be with a uh, uh, that with a at the office with a nice with, with tie, tie yeah which would go with that because i like ties personally i like ties and i like them to be interesting and so on but of course i realize and we must always remember what they are even if they like the tie, they want to know what I'm going to say and what I think and how I'll help. But that's fine. But I think you can do that in uniform. But as soon as the end of the day comes, then I'm very much into casual clothes mm-hmm. and so on. And uh, that's appropriate for weekend when you go to music and whatever you listen to. And the hipster style places, which I'm all for. By the way, again, I was saying some of those we were we had in our little group for running this cultural a center which I still want to do but you can combine them all but yes. just each one should keep to their what do you feel comfortable in and go with that but be, be professional in whatever you're doing in that but uh, office is office and office is office yeah evening is evening and I can't wait and we'll have a good <laughs> beer and whatever thanks a lot do we need do we need the young people, you said that we need young people to get involved, to have maybe a political experience also in order to get to know the public affairs domain. Do we need more young people, educated young people joining the political parties? Because the, as you said, the trust in the political parties decreased. Most of the people feel unrepresented. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the ur- ur- urban class feels unrepresented. The people who own exactly. businesses like myself, we don't feel represented <clears throat> right, n- right now. How how can the political class develop an eight better HR? Have they done this differently in the United Kingdom or in other places in Europe? You have well, it's a good uh, question, and uh, and I've been I've also been an part of my study. I mean, I. 
I would call myself a political analyst and I understand politics and I've been following for years, for some reason, I've been wasting my time <laughs> on political things, which I like very much, including in UK. And and Templar Tor, I visited there, there being UK. Um, the big problem is the, the uh, quality of the politicians, the political class. And again, it's because there's not enough younger people are going. They just think, why should I bother? You know, I can, I prefer to be, I'll make more, more money being an accountant or a lawyer or having my own firm or something. And it's the same everywhere. And if you look at the very recent results in elections, so whether it's from, and in the big countries, also, also France and Germany, they, they have a big problem in the quality of people who, are, who rise up because their younger, brighter people are not joining, not going to politics. So I think it's a big problem. I'm not sure if it's when you were saying you use the the HR human resources campaign, if you like, of the politicians. Is I don't think it's down to them. I'm afraid it's down to us, the people. We need to be say actually, yeah, I'm going to join a political party. And what is needed, in my view, is younger people. We want people from their 25 to 35, 35 to. 40 age with their ideas and saying okay let's let me join and let's think this is what our education policy should be this is what our uh, you know finance and economics and so on but there's many other things that involved in government and i think they just need to gradually we hope to this more and more will be convinced if they get so pissed off that they said look i'm really not represented uh Let's me join something. And don't just be negative and say, ah, we know them, you know, they're too old yeah. and so on. If you do that, you don't resolve anything. And it, But it's the same in all the countries, I repeat, that it's uh, the the turnout voting is, is getting down and down, which is very bad because the inverse of that means... Like in Romania, in some parts, imagine seventy percent, seventy seven zero did not vote. How can you not vote and not realize that there is a lesson which is bloody hell? I'd better be the one to get involved in a party, and uh, <clears throat> and that's the way to bring. And they're needed. Okay, you need a full team of some experienced guys, but it should be a good group of young ones. Even if they only last for five or ten years, if you look at the example in uh, New Zealand, where the there was a woman prime minister yeah. there who was in I don't know late thirties. I, I don't know exact. I can't remember exactly. But the I, to, that was a good example. At least she got involved. She said, "Okay." She rose up in that party, and then had after five years was worn out. But in my view, the fact that she had bothered to try and used up and you know, even burning out, as it were, and had to leave, but at least she'd contributed something. And that's also, that's the example. People should think, maybe I'll go there, okay. And don't stay like some of the older peak parliamentarians in UK, but also here in Romania. They, you know, have been there. Well, I'm very happy I've been here for five and six mandates. What? You know, maybe we should start thinking the norm should be more like one or, well, two at least to make a, you know, so you have a continuous time. But something like this to say, and it's okay and it's a decent thing to do and so on, and then leave. Uh, yes, I think it's going to become normal. The, I mean, this. I think <coughs> this political career should be considered public service and you can continue your yeah, public exactly. service as an activist you can continue this passion for representing people outside the power zone mm -hmm. even as a lobbyist it will become yeah. with revolving doors mechanism with ethical rules to avoid people using the power they had and the influence they had in the in the public office mm -hmm. uh, but uh, preventing this 
but doing the right way, doing it in a, in a passionate way. Because I think what young people should understand about being involved in politics is not about getting to be a, a more powerful or richer. It's about getting to be more responsible. It's about serving in the end, like being a priest, like being a doctor or maybe it's about serving. And I think our job is also about serving. It's about serving and saying that serving isn't the public is an honorable thing. I mean, it's not something to be sneered at. Of course, there are bad people that uh, we should sneer at. <laughs> but most of them, again, I mentioned are. And and maybe the idea of that duty should start if you get into politics saying, oh, OK, I don't want to go national politics. Fine. Lo go on the local council. I mean, there are elections. Everything is elected for. We complain about uh, dustbins and other things. If you can do better, what they've been, go become a council, get in a party, join a council, and do something. So start that way, and, and then learn there the parliamentary way, because that's the <clears throat> the traditional route was that was way. People got involved in local politics and became important there, up in their big cities. CBU Cluj and so on, and then they came. There'll be next thing you know, you're elected president, <laughs> like CBU. Yeah, yeah. We have. Uh, For example, we yeah. don't, don't forget that that he was there as they did a very good, effective two mandates there, making a lot of changes, getting investors and so on coming. And things happened. You no one planned it, and then suddenly it happens that. In fact, that's the best candidate, and there they are. So maybe people, should, it's inspiring rather than daunting. Exactly. It should look at this it positive, should. bright side of uh, a career of the current president. Bright side of Romania. That reminds me of one of the first campaigns I started in Shell when I was head of Shell here. And uh, that was the early 90s, so it was a bit dark and Things were, you know, only just changing from pretty miserable times. And uh, we uh, we started, I, st we, I helped the um, Christy Lasco and the Guess, which is an underground uh, cave, caving expert, him and some colleagues who in th also were involved, by the way, in NASA projects, mm -hmm. very high level scientific uh, work but anyway among other things uh, he took uh, photographs underneath in caves and around with but very well lit and uh, so we were able to have pictures and of the underground of uh, our country Romania there and it was the bright face of Romania nice it made one. people think ah oh, remember the nature things ah this is the what this is what the country is as well and not just the you know the miserable cities as they were then Anyway, the bright face of Romania. I was very proud of that one. So, <coughs> so uh, a, con a very pragmatic question. Why, why should a company hire a consultancy, a public affairs agency, to represent them, rather than trying to do it only internally and only by meetings uh, arranged by the CEO and so on with the decision makers? Because they should uh, look on public affairs uh, like they do in other parts of their business. They, what some of them call the harder part of the business. They said, oh, this is the soft things. But I think they need to look with a hard eagle eye, shall we say even, on public affairs, which means that in your normal, in your marketing, in your logistics, in your other areas, you're always looking for the best people, the best contractors, who's going to be a good part, long, excuse me, good long-term partner for us, and so on. That's exactly the hard criteria you should use when you're thinking about dealing with the authorities. It isn't just a meeting. So somehow we have to get across to the point that uh, every from every meeting, once they start, it it counts because that's all been. You're leaving a legacy from that first meeting with the people you meet. And if you don't go prepared with a background, again, I, I say a written, what is our position, in fact, vis-à-vis -vis the, 
for this minister, then it's a clear thing there which he will remember, and you and you have a sound basis. And the only way to do that is to have one or two reliable voices from outside your own management team, which can guide you to that to say this is what you need to be doing. Careful with this, what we say to them, and so on. And not that the others are not, you know, they don't. The common sense is mainly what it is, and the the own good managers have common sense, but they don't always have the nuance that uh, is behind and is very necessary with officials and well other groups. I mean, other interest groups, for example, who you might be affecting. So to recap, lobbying is about. Uh, transmitting a professional point of view of, of a certain domain or asso association of mm. companies of an industry related to, to legislation related to the framework lobbying is about helping the economic environment develop and develop the society it's about it's about the essence of the capitalism lobbying is about being part of the debate it's about democracy in the end it's about democracy and is about involving both lobbyists and politicians and everybody around them, mm. the staff and the experts, in a change for good. Agreed. A good summary. <laughs> Thank you so much. And in the end, I would kindly ask you a very simple question, I think, mm. but difficult at the same time. Can the public affairs industry do even more for the development of Romania in the next 10 years? Are, should we consider our industry crucial for the development of Romania? Well, that's a bold claim. And if we want to be if we want to be uh, continuing to do our job in all the aspects that you mentioned of professionalism and so, and so on then i think it's uh, i think it's a bold aim and it's one we should embrace and say yes we are essential part of it because i personally believe that this public sector improvement which whether it will come from new people going into politics or something has to be improved and we can be part of that process so that's why i would say it's an essential one so, Mr. Guy Barrow, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for what you initiated with the public, mm -hmm. in the, uh, public affairs industry. And thank you very much for what we are going to build together in the exactly. next 10 years. I'm very glad future. you ended with what we're going to be doing now. And continuare. So and continuare, exactly. Now and now in the next starting to. Uh, life goes on like that. It's always going up and up and new things new industries will appear. That's why it makes life challenging. You look in the newspaper and you think, God, look what they've discovered and so on. Can you imagine? What are we doing? Going to the Mars. It's great. So let's get everything right exactly. going on Earth. Exactly. First. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much.